Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining in for today's webinar presentation and abbreviation of the Growing Wisconsin Readers presentation that's been done at workshops around the state this fall, and now we're going to be doing it online. So thank you for being here. My name is Tessa Michelson Schmidt, and I'm the Youth and Special Services Consultant for Public Libraries. Talking to you today from the Department of Public Instruction here in Madison. And my email address is up on the screen, and I encourage you to be in touch with me um, at any time, um, not during the webinar, but certainly afterward, and I would be glad to hear your input or answer any questions you have about the session that I'm offering today. Before I begin going into the content related to Growing Wisconsin Readers, I just want to um, go over a little bit of housekeeping for today's webinar. I know a lot of you are familiar with webinars and how they work, but this platform, Blackboard Collaborate, might be a little new for you. So just to get you oriented, you will see, um, just usually it's in the middle on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the participants window, and that's just where your name will show up and let you know who is joining us, and that's where you have um, some options for raising your hand or asking a question um, or responding to a poll, which we'll be getting to in just a minute. So um, that's the participants window, and then usually right below uh, the participants window is the chat window, and that's the one that most people are familiar with, and I've already seen people entering some text in there, and I encourage you to continue chatting throughout the webinar. My colleague here at DPI, Terry Howe, the LSTA coordinator and continuing education consultant, is monitoring the chat, and she will be noting questions you have that I might answer during breaks, um, as well as just uh, welcoming everybody, so to speak, into today's conversation. So if you haven't yet, please uh, introduce yourself with your name, your library, where you're joining us um, from today in the chat bar. Also, um, I've got that green arrow pointing to the bottom of the screen, and this is the footer that will be on most of the slides to remind you that if you are joining using the telephone audio, just remember that star six is the telephone key for um, muting or unmuting your audio. So um, if you're going to be eating your lunch during today's webinar, make sure that if you're on the telephone, you have that muted. Thank you. Also, while we can provide a little bit of some tech support, um, if you really are having issues with the Blackboard Collaborate platform, um, please contact them directly because they can troubleshoot versus we are just here to monitor chat and uh, share some content with you. So really, if it's a technical glitch, um, just check out the Blackboard Collaborate support. So. With that, we're going to move on to the today's content after we've reviewed these tools. So I want to begin by welcoming everybody who is here today. Um, and no matter where we come from, I'm guessing that the majority of us are an early childhood advocate of some form or another. And that might mean we are educators or working in the community with in, as a medical professional or perhaps in social services or coming from public library. So at this point, I'm going to ask you to use a tool that you have in the participant window, and that's to answer a poll on either A, B, C, D, or E, um, letting us know who's joining us today. And as a reminder of where you can find these, again, in the participants window, you will see a little box with an A in it. And this is an opportunity for you to vote. So go up there. It should be right beneath your name. Find that little box with the letter A in it, and it's a drop-down. And you'll be able to choose A, B, C, D, or E. And let us know how you define yourself under these categories today. So I'm just going to give us a moment for people to respond to the poll so that we just have an idea of who is in the room. I've seen one person vote already, and that's great. A couple more people chiming in. And in just a minute, I will display these responses on the screen. So again, to orient you, um, head up to the participants window and look for the drop down under the A um, to show the polling choices. 
So I'm going to give people just one more minute, and then we should be able to oops, we should be able to to see the the results of our poll. So as people are doing that, I am going to publish the responses, and we'll see where we're at at this point. And here we go. I'm going to move this on up here. And we can see that so far, out of our 16 respond, our 16 people joining us today, that the majority are D public library staff, which doesn't surprise me too much since uh, uh, this uh, this uh, content is um, intended for a public library audience. And as you'll soon hear, the Growing Wisconsin Readers Initiative is based in public libraries. So thanks for joining us. But as indicated in the workshops and other messages I've done through this initiative is that we are really uh, considering this a collaborative initiative. And so even if these folks aren't in the room with us today, I encourage you to be in touch with them about the initiative or perhaps share with them the link to this webinar so that you can um, share with them a bit more about what this is all about. So even though there might not be a preschool teacher in the room, or a pediatrician, or a birth through three educator, you know, consider them somebody that you should be in touch with regarding this initiative. So thanks for participating in the poll, and let's move on. Now that we know that we're all public library folks, let's hear more about Growing Wisconsin Readers. So just to give you an overview today, um, this is the agenda of what I will be talking about, kind of four main things. First, what is Growing Wisconsin Readers in a nutshell? What's the basics of this? And then a bit of background on how it was all developed. How did it come to be? And then thirdly, I will talk about how is Growing Wisconsin Readers being implemented? What's happening out in the field? And then lastly, since this is an initiative that is um, funded through grants, I, I really want to explore how will Growing Wisconsin Readers be sustained. So with that in mind, we're going to continue on. And as indicated in the announcement for this webinar, um, this is an abbreviation of a presentation that I've done at seven workshops across the state in the past month or two. And while those sessions tended to go from an hour 15 minutes to um, 90 minutes, or longer, uh, today's session, I'm really going to focus on doing it in about an hour with time at the end for questions and answers. So we'll see as we're going along if there's time to pause and answer a specific question that comes in on the chat. Otherwise, know that my goal is to be done in about an hour so that we have some minutes at the end for questions and answers via chat and audio. So with that in mind, let's move on ahead and talk about what is Growing Wisconsin Readers? Um, and again, this is just a reminder that you can put your thoughts or inputs and responses in that chat bar as we move along, and Terry will be monitoring that. So let's talk, let's jump right into what is Growing Wisconsin Readers. So in a nutshell, this is, as I said, an early literacy initiative that is based in Wisconsin public libraries. It is an initiative that is being coordinated by the public library development team here at DPI. And the majority of Grown Wisconsin readers is supported by LSTA grant monies. And when we talk about, well, what is Grown Wisconsin readers, whether it's talking about it to a library director or um, a preschool teacher, somebody who doesn't really uh, is not a youth services librarian who's heard in, out, upside down everything about Growing Wisconsin Readers. In a nutshell, it's an integrated brochure, poster, and website that is in English, Spanish, and Hmong. So an early literacy initiative that is trying to reach caregivers um, through a variety of channels. The two goals of Growing Wisconsin Readers, the primary goal is that this is an initiative to reach caregivers to help them know how to read more effectively with young children. That's the primary goal of this initiative. The secondary goal of this initiative is to highlight ways that public libraries have been supporting caregivers in the realm of early literacy and how we are enriching the literacy lives um, in our, throughout the state. We have over 380 public libraries, over 400 actual facilities. And so this is a great home base for this initiative. And early literacy and public libraries is nothing new, in fact, the youth services librarians in Wisconsin have been doing a great job on this for decades. 
but as um, I will soon explore, there's a real reason to give more energy and attention to this and to serve as a home base to help make some connections across our communities in the realm of early literacy. So let's talk more about what that might look like. Um, and this is just a brief pause to let you know that if you're madly scrambling and trying to write down everything I'm mentioning today, just relax and know that pretty much everything you need to know is online. And so I really consider this presentation an awareness um, presentation, not a uh, massive absorption presentation. So some of the basic things I've just talked, to, talked about, you know, these nutshell, frequently asked questions kinds of things can be found on the Growing Wisconsin Readers FAQ document. And that is on the Growing Wisconsin Readers website, growingwisconsinreaders.org. And there's a tab that I'll be referring to often today, and that's the Resources for Librarians tab. And while it says Resources for Librarians, please consider this a place where, again, any of those other early childhood advocates might, uh, might go. You might direct the um, Head Start people in your community. You might be directing the pediatricians with whom you're connecting to the same tab to find the majority of information. So again, that FAQ two-page PDF, it's right there if you want to know some more of the basics about this initiative. And before I go uh, on too much, I want to just pause and, and check in about early literacy because that's um, a pretty academic term and one that we throw around, throw around quite a bit. And there are different ways to define it. And in fact, uh, early literacy can sometimes also refer to as emergent literacy or some of these pre-reading skills that young children are developing. Um, we also hear the term family literacy in terms of the relationship between family members and reading, especially um, at this young age. So that's another term that we hear. And again, keeping in mind that this is an initiative aimed at caregivers, a lot of them aren't using these academic terms um, when what they're talking about is bedtime stories. Most people say, let's head up and read some books before bed. They're not saying, it's 8 p.m., brush your teeth, and it's time for early literacy. So um, I say that um, as a joke, but also as a way to remind us that um, we, are all, we are all vested in the same thing. We just might be calling it different things. And so I just want to take a brief moment to check in with you all who are joining today to just say in a word or two, what does early literacy mean to you in the way that you practice it, since we all identify that we're from the public library world, what does early literacy mean for you in your library? So we're just going to take a brief pause, and if you can go to the chat box and just type in a word or two about what does early literacy mean to you. That could mean story time, does that mean books, does that mean a certain kind of relationship or passion? Thanks, Sue, for being the first one to chat. Um, and let us know that early literacy means fun with language. And absolutely, language is really the core of this. Um, early literacy is about learning how to communicate and using um, our language, our words, our sounds, as well as text and pictures to, to communicate in our society. Irma, thank you for saying encouraging reading for families. Yeah, letting them know that there are lots of ways to do it and it's so important. Um, I also see connecting kids with books, exposure to print. John, I love that you said imagination. Absolutely. Um, we also have to teach a love of reading. Yeah, reading is fun and it is something to really be enjoyable. So thanks all for um, jumping in on that. And just as an anecdote from the various workshops I've done around the state, this when I uh, paused um, to let people talk in person during these workshops, it was really hard to quiet people down and to continue continue going with uh, the presentation because people really have a lot to say about this topic. And um, and Tara or Tara, who's just uh, added in here, it's a jump start to learning. And absolutely, uh, reading and literacy is a fundamental lifelong skill. So let's talk more about um, why this initiative, um, all about all of these things that you just said, what we're doing with it, and why it's so critical. So this is an image that um, I share because perhaps in some of the answers that you just uh, chatted, 
um, something related to this may have come to mind about, you know, engaging with young children, um, play or imagination. We can imagine a conversation that's happening right here when we're talking about language and and um, connecting uh, kids with with books and ideas. That this might look like something that could happen at your library, or certainly in the lives of the young children um, who visit your library. And for better or for worse, often when we're trying to describe or bring attention to early literacy and this critical uh, window in early childhood, we sometimes get responses like this. It's like, cute, or that looks like fun, or geez, those kids must love you in terms of the work that you're trying to do as an early childhood advocate in your, in your position at your library. And this is all, this is all great, and uh, sure, the kids definitely are. Um, most of the time pretty cute, and um, certainly if you're reading books and sharing uh, interactive language activities with them, they, they probably do love it because their brains are just soaking all of that up. But the fact is, is that part of this initiative is helping to reframe and bring greater awareness within our libraries and also within our communities of how critical early literacy is. And so we can really reframe the caption for what's, what's happening in this picture and talking about play and that, you know, whatever this is, whether it's a caregiver and a child or a preschool teacher or perhaps an older sibling, I mean, we don't know, that this kind of interaction is, is building essential vocabulary and motor skills and that these are uh, skills that are critical for learning to read. And so again, just putting this in here as a way to kind of help reframe or rethink some of the things that we've been doing for a long time and how we can help um, um, explain why things are really important and to help people recognize that. So we know that there are many reasons why early literacy is important and I want to draw your attention to just a couple things that um, are tools at your fingertips for, again, exploring and sharing and communicating this message with people in your community. There's been a recent publication called Growing Young Minds, How Museums and Libraries Create Lifelong Learners. And this is published by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And there's just many great tools in here, either quotes or facts or ideas of libraries and museums all around the country and why, um, why we're really poised to make an impact in the realm of early literacy. So in addition to just some of these main things that we know that, that why this is such a window, if you don't take action during this time period, it can really be a setback for obviously the school age, but definitely beyond that. So with that in mind, um, here are just some, uh, some of the other ideas of why early literacy is really important in connection to libraries. Some things that we sometimes take for granted is that public libraries are trusted and welcoming places. They are egalitarian, they're free, they welcome all members of our community, and that they are really encouraging um, imagination, exploration, play, entertainment, all of these things. And so we're really poised to be a home base for this initiative. Um, this resource, as well as many others, um, what, which I'm generally calling Early Literacy Research and Inspiration, uh, you can find this on the Growing Wisconsin Readers website, again, on that Resources for Librarians tab. And this is where you can get the PDF to the Growing Young Mind report that just came out a couple of months ago, or you can um, read some of the other sources that have been fundamental in creating Growing Wisconsin Readers or our resources from, uh, from the, the people and agencies with whom we've collaborated in designing this, this initiative. So check that out there if you want to learn more about it. Now going back to, in a nutshell, about Growing Wisconsin Readers, there are really two, um, two main groups that we're talking to here. As I've already identified, uh, this, the number one goal of this initiative is to reach out to the caregivers. And we're referring specifically to caregivers of children birth through six. And that doesn't mean you can't read to them before they're born, and it certainly isn't to say that you should stop reading um, on their sixth birthday. It's actually just focusing on this very general window of young childhood and um, the early school years. And when I say caregivers, I'm definitely talking about parents. I'm talking about grandparents. I'm talking about older siblings. I'm talking about 
preschool teachers, daycare providers, anyone who's a caring adult who's involved in uh, the young literacy life of, of little ones. That's, that's who we're talking about here. And in addition, this is an initiative that's also working with the early literacy advocates. Um, and these, again, um, are public librarians. These might be youth services staff and might be directors. Every library in our state does things a little bit differently depending on their, their situation and resources. But this is an initiative that's based in public libraries, but it's also asking for collaboration with other early literacy or early childhood advocates in your community. Some of those people I've already identified. They might be those daycare providers, um, Head Start folks, um, medical community. This could be the family family practice clinic nearby. Um, it could be the birth through three educator, family resources folks. This is aimed at connecting all these people uh, with the same goal of early literacy. And one important thing to note about this, these audience and users is that it's across the spectrum. That these are we're talking about caregivers from all all places in life from families who have um, a personal library at home to those who have no books at home. And we're talking about um, libraries or, or, or um, agencies that are already doing a tremendous amount in the realm of early literacy to those libraries or agencies who are really just trying to gain footing in that area or needing a place to start. This initiative is intended to reach everyone. The parts and pieces of Growing Wisconsin Readers, there's a screenshot there to kind of show um, an idea of this integrated brochure, poster, and website that I've mentioned. And that's part of it. That's kind of the hands-on, the tangible part. But there are other features as well. There have been workshops that have already been conducted over the past couple of months to launch this initiative. There have been many grants offered as a way of helping um, libraries really get a jump start on a couple of different shelf-ready projects. And there have also been money set aside in the competitive grant category for libraries or library systems to, under the auspices of, of early literacy and growing Wisconsin readers, to really make a, a project that's, that's best fitted for their community. And um, there will be other professional development opportunities, including a symposium coming up in early 2014. So again, this initiative is not just some printed project products and a website and to say early literacy is important, it's actually um, there are a lot of different uh, levels and elements that are included in it to help people feel supported at wh wherever they are, kind of on that the spectrums I just addressed, so that there really is something for everybody. But again, thinking about this in a nutshell, why are we doing Growing Wisconsin Readers? Why are we having a statewide initiative on this topic? Well, the primary reason is right there on the screen. It's that little one right in the center of the caregiver's lap. Because it is critical for us to be playing a key role in developing literate lifelong learners. That's what this initiative is all about. And in addition to that, we are trying to support caregivers in being effective readers with young children and to foster these great reading experiences, whether it's in a story time or a caregiver training, or just providing resources for people to have loads and loads of great books and um, reading opportunities. That's, that's what this is about. And of course, since it's based in public libraries, um, we are also really trying to utilize public library resources. Again, thinking about this initiative trying to meet all these different kinds of users and audience members all across the straight state and basing this in public libraries, we want people to feel that they have access to the main materials they need to have early literacy experiences. And I joke that you can't see the barcode on the book in this picture, but we can hope that it is a book that's checked out from their local public library. And lastly, um, this initiative is not intended to be this big project from the state coming down and being uh, universal across the board. Everybody needs to do it in one way. In fact, this initiative is, is um, built with many different uh, levels, like I had suggested in the earlier slide, to help support community-specific efforts so that people can plug this in wherever they're at. And this image here, we have no idea where this uh, caregiver and child are sitting. They could be sitting on a bench 
right outside the library. They just got a book and wanted to go sit out in the sun and, and take take a read. Or maybe this is sitting in a, a local playground, or perhaps it's in the courtyard at Head Start facility or at the family practice clinic. We don't really know, but we want to make sure reading is happening all over our community and that wherever these families uh, with young children are going, they're getting the same message from everybody in a really positive and affirmative way that reading is really important and we're going to help you do it and we're going to help give you the tools to have um, really positive experiences. So that's what Growing Wisconsin Readers is all about in a nutshell. And kind of a, a theme throughout all of this that I've already identified is that it's about this universal recognition. And that can mean um, just the recognition around the town of seeing a Growing Wisconsin Readers poster at the grocery store, seeing another one at the YMCA, um, being at the church or the synagogue on the weekend and seeing um, some brochures on display, all with um, everything leading them back to the local public library. That kind of universal recognition within a community that all of these people and places that I visit um, value early literacy and are trying to support me. That's, that's one of the aspects of recognition that I'm talking about. In addition, we're talking about the universal recognition across the state that um, that wherever, whether you're in Rhinelander or Fenimore or Superior or Milwaukee, that this is a message that public libraries are a home base for this, and we are trying to support this for the for the for the better good of our entire state. That's part of the universal recognition as well of this initiative. So now I'm going to move on to talk a little bit about the development of Growing Wisconsin Readers so that we all have a better idea of how it came to be and rather than it just being this mystery box of materials that showed up one day. Um, so if you um, already have some of the materials in hand, this is going to walk through them. If you um, have not received your posters or brochures, um, let's be in touch about how you can get some of those. But also know that any of the materials I'm talking about are available for viewing or printing on the Growing Wisconsin Readers website. So with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about some of these materials and how they came to be. So Growing Wisconsin Readers didn't just arrive fully formed. It, like many other projects, developed as a, a tiny seed of an idea that just grew. And for me, um, about two years ago, I was at a session at the Wisconsin Association of Public Libraries WAPL conference, and I heard a presentation from Dr. Depeche Nassaria from Reach Out and Read, and he is um, a pediatrician. He also has his library degree, but he's a pediatrician who um, is part of um, a national um, campaign called Reach Out and Read that provides medical, um, medical clinicians with children's books as part of the Well Child Checkup. And basically what that means is that families with young children, every time they go to the doctor before school age, they get a free um, children's book. And not only do they get that book and the encouragement or prescription to read, but they are also using that book in the interaction between the child and the book and the parent and the child and the book as a diagnostic tool for the Well Child Checkup. So while the child is perhaps um, looking at the board book, uh, the doctor can evaluate, uh, do they have motor control? Are they flipping the pages on their own? Are they chewing on the book? Um, are they able, are their eyes functioning and drawn to the images in the book? Uh, are they very responsive to the book because they read a lot and are, are keep making eye contact with the parent or caregiver because they want the parent or caregiver to read to them? All of these are conversation pieces between um, the doctor and the caregiver for that appointment to, to talk about how their child is developing and to, to give encouragement about the importance of reading. So all of this is, this is all well and good, um, but 
hearing it from this doctor and having a lot of the science behind of what's actually happening in the, the mind of this little baby and the development um, was pretty powerful. And in addition to hearing this in a new way was the collaboration between the doctor and the local public library and trying to um, support these caregivers um, with early literacy experiences. So this is pretty powerful to me and it's something that was happening in many clinics around Wisconsin. So I started having a lot of conversations with, with folks around the state who, um, what, what early literacy things are happening? What are things that we're doing that are unique and independent? Or what are things that we're all doing the same? Um, just to get an idea of if, if something is needed, do we need something more universal, put together, um, or are people fine with what they have? And the conversation was really clear um, for me in talking with people from systems and libraries all around the state that having something um, statewide, uh, a package initiative is something that would be really, really appreciated. So with that in mind, as again getting a lot of ideas of what would this look like and how can we make it flexible enough that it works for everyone, um, with getting some grant money from the Institute of Museum and Library Services to make this happen. So all those things came together as well as collaborating with other agencies because as much as uh, we advise folks out practicing in the library world, whether it's programs or services, to not spend our energy reinventing the wheel, I didn't want to do that either. So I looked to some other agencies and folks who have already done a lot in the past on the path for early literacy and brought them in for this initiative so that, um, again, kind of um, bringing things into alignment. So we have the Wisconsin Model Early Learning Standards for Early Literacy, so some of these kind of developmental ideas about um, what ha what's happening at different ages for reading. Um, getting the endorsement of the Wisconsin chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics on the brain development piece and why this is so important. Tying into one of our gems in terms of the best for children's books for teens and adults, uh, or sorry, for children and young adults is the Cooperative Children's Book Center. So getting their input on on the best uh, books and authors for this initiative, as well as another Wisconsin resource, teachingbooks.net, available through BadgerLink for um, some more things related to children's books. So putting that all together is kind of how Growing Wisconsin Readers got started. In addition, there was a lot of input gathered from librarians in the field. And so last spring, a survey was sent out with a pretty good uh, response rate answering seven basic questions related to early literacy. And from the responses I got from this initiative, I was really able to see um, where people were at, what they needed, um, what they already had, what they were curious about. And this is just one example of one of the questions. And you can see that there was um, kind of a two-pronged question of all these different resources. Which ones do you use already related to early literacy? And which ones would you like more experience with? And so just to highlight a couple of things, for one, uh, the Cooperative Children's Book Center came in pretty high as a resource everyone used. Well, that indicated to me that this is something, uh, an institu institution that's very respected and well used. So that doesn't mean I should, you know, toss them out and, and move on to something else. It actually was an indicator of this is something that's really reliable and people want to hear from. So they were an obvious partner for this project. The second highest one was other public libraries in Wisconsin, and this is something I hear again and again, especially as uh, many of us in youth services are unable to, to travel or to get away because of, of limited resources of time and budget. They want to be able to hear what other people are doing, even if they can't get to conferences and workshops to, to see it or hear from it in person. They still want to have access to it. So that was something that was a big thing I kept in mind in the development of this. And then um, more toward the middle of this, um, we can see a thousand books before kindergarten and how this is something that some people are using but other people are more curious about. So that was an idea that helped um, come together down the line with the mini grants of how can we help people with it. So just as an idea of this, a lot of feedback was taken um, to get input from people of how to make this initiative work best for them. So this is just one example of some of the survey responses. 
And as I've indicated, um, we wanted this initiative to be very flexible, but also customizable, so that it really worked for an exact library as well as a community in terms of what the needs were. And wanting to, to be very supportive. So again, whether you're starting out and you don't really have anything in place, or you already have some things in place, but you want a bit more training or a bit more options, finding a lot of different things, um, different ways to meet people's needs. And in addition, it was really, really important to me that whatever um, whatever this initiative came developed from it, um, that it would be really high quality and something sustainable, so that it's not um, you know extremely dated. As especially as we're about to turn our calendars to 2014, that whatever materials we produced um, didn't um, you know didn't just say 2013 all over them. It was something that it was just really. Um, quality basic stuff that um, was printed in a really professional way that it wasn't something people could produce on their own, but it would really benefit um, to be produced as a statewide resource. So those were some of the things that um, were kept in mind all along as this initiative was being developed. And again, as this is, this is uh, again, pulling back from looking at this in the big picture, the focus of this initiative is really on early literacy. That, and these are some of the other folks that are involved in it, public libraries, the caregivers, and other, other advocates. But the main goal of this initiative is really focusing on, on the early literacy aspect. And also, as indicated in terms of kind of the, the flexible, multiple levels of support, is that you know, the blue circle here is talking about, yes, we have these materials. Across the board, everybody will have these, this stuff, this tangible stuff. But then we wanted to build in some other elements as well for some of this professional development or some additional incentives or support for however people wanted, um, whatever direction people wanted to take this, this opportunity. And I have this on here as kind of a growth chart or timeline so that we can see where the initiative is going. And um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of um, reaching the edge of the screen here um, with almost uh, heading into 2014 and what's ahead. And if any of you were paying attention from the, the very first slide when I talked about the what Growing Wisconsin Readers is all about, as I said, that it's a three-year initiative. And as indicated on the screen here, we just have two years. And that's quite intentional because we're not exactly sure what's going to happen in the third year of Growing Wisconsin Readers. Or we haven't even fully um, delineated what's happening in 2014 because a lot of what Growing Wisconsin Readers is about is being flexible and responsive to the needs of public libraries and their systems. So there are some things that we've already gotten great input on for what's coming ahead and I'm certain that we will get more input as we go along and see how this is all um, happening once it's being implemented um, to see what are the What's it going to look like in 2014 and 2015? Um, but we know that this initiative is going to be going for three years. Um, just a little bit about the design of this brochure and poster. Um, again, thinking about the universal recognition, we wanted this to be something that's you know appealing and that it helps people have a connection across their community, again, whether it's at the grocery store, at the community center, they keep seeing these same materials, but that it's also um, drawing people back to the public library with how um, the different places for these materials to be customized. Um, also knowing the lifestyles of these caregivers. They don't have um, time to be reading this huge big tome on early literacy or attending some huge training session. We need something to be really flexible that they can tuck into a diaper bag or you know, view on their, their uh, smartphone and just get the gist of it. Um, because we know that they don't really have a lot of time when they've got a, a youngster on their hands. So these are just some of the things that um, were in mind as we developed this. Um, this is just at a glance. This is what the brochure looks like if you were to unfold it and see kind of the front and back. A few things I want to point out on here. Um, there's that big blank spot under um, under the, the title on the back, the back panel there. And that's intentional. This is perfectly sized for you to stick a mailing label 
or um, perhaps even your um, your rubber stamp for your library to identify where this is coming from. When it says visit your public library, boom, we know exactly what public library this this uh, this brochure came from. So that spot there is intended for you to customize. The yellow arrow is pointing to some of the, the major partners and supporters in this initiative that I've already identified. And then the orange arrow is pointing to a QR code, a quick response code. And this is just an indicator to anybody that there's a web of presence for, for this initiative. And this is something that um, there's a lot of research showing that this is uh, more and more people are using this, uh, you know, using QR codes and using um, getting most of their information online. I mean, we know that from just being at libraries. Um, but we did a lot of a lot of research on people's lifestyles and how they interact with online material. And especially um, across the spectrum, we know that even the, the poorest people in our communities, that they, they are using cell phones. And in addition, their cell phones are usually smartphones. And for many families, um, especially in poverty, those are the only, that's the, the the primary way they access the internet. Um, whereas people on the other end might have you know multiple smartphones, a laptop at work, two at home, an iPad, you know multiple devices. Um, again, having an online presence and identifying the online presence with a QR code was really critical in the development of this project. A quick look at the inside of this brochure, we'll see that there are many categories here. And while it might look like a lot of information, we have to realize that the um, majority of the, the families looking at this are going to be just looking at one or two of these age categories and not reading the whole thing all at once. You know, They might have a baby, or they might have a preschool age child and a baby on the way. Um, they're not going to be reading this uh, all at once. Instead, as they read down, um, the, you know, they're just general age groups here. And then for each age group, it gives kind of a portrait developmentally of, of what, what, what life is like at that, that age or stage in life. And then looking again, going down, reading together. Now, this is where we're getting some of the input from the Wisconsin Model Early Learning Standards, as well as some information from the pediatric community of what does it look like reading together at these particular ages. And again, the whole tone and the language used here in this, this brochure and these materials is positive and affirming and not academic. So we're not using any uh, technical terms here. And just even the simple reminder, toddlers have short attention spans. So it's OK if your little one doesn't sit through a whole book. Something we might know, especially if we're youth services librarians and have done story times for little ones, we certainly know that they don't always have the attention span span to finish even one book or several. So just again, some of these really practical and um, positive um, facts about the reading life of little ones. And you know, being on the road um, for these workshops this fall, I kept hearing that again and again of how parents and caregivers really don't have some of these these, these experiences or need this this um, reinforcement of it's okay. We'll we'll help you learn how to read with your little one because maybe you didn't have that experience growing up, um, but you want you you know it's important and you want to do it and you want to do it right. Well, this is a way of helping helping caregivers do that. Uh, the other section on here is a few authors to enjoy. Now, I pointed this out at all the workshops I did that um, as librarians, many of us looked at this and thought, huh. Well, this is an author. I I would have picked this other person instead. Or hmm, why didn't why isn't so and so on the list? Well, this is another thing that was quite intentional about this, intentional about this whole initiative is that the authors selected on here from recommendations from the Cooperative Children's Book Center. These authors um, matched up, looking at. Um, Authors who were, again, um, a variety of authors, multicultural authors, but more, more importantly, authors that looking at um, WorldCat at Holdings, that almost every library in Wisconsin had books by these authors. So again, knowing this is a statewide resource, that we don't want to suggest to somebody, oh, get, go and get a book by so-and-so, and not every library has that. So that was another reason um, for selecting these authors, is that there were many books by them 
for young children and that most libraries in Wisconsin have them. So again, another intentional component of this initiative. And lastly, as you're reading down in one of these columns, you'll see on the big picture, this is where really the, the why comes in here. And I really urge you to, to um, you know, kind of absorb this information and there's, there's more online of helping explain what's happening in the, the brain and body of a young child in terms of their, their, their literacy skills and abilities. What is the big picture here on why it's so important to be reading and offering language experiences for these little ones? This is where the, the input from the, the medical community really was important um, for how, to, how do you explain this and, and how do you help bring this idea home? What's the big picture behind that? And these are some of these sentiments that are really um, crucial for us to incorporate into story times when we're modeling why we're, we're using rhymes or we're modeling song and movement. Um, some of these tips or main ideas um, can be drawn right from, from the brochure website in this uh, regard. Looking at the poster here, um, now you can see this big, big empty space and you know exactly what that's for. Um, this is a place for libraries to, again, customize. And maybe it's just putting your library contact information with a stamp or a sticker, or maybe it's adding a bit more of a personal message about um, a certain offering that you have or a certain message that you want to give in your community. And again, this is where that QR code is coming in handy. You know, maybe this is um, at a bulletin board somewhere and a parent just keeps seeing it again and again. Well, it's that reminder that, hey, you might want to grab your smartphone look at it and then browse, um, peruse the, the website while you're sitting in a waiting room or you're on the bus or whatever, you fill in the blank. Um, the website uh, directly parallels the, the brochure and the poster in many ways. The URL is very easy, growingwisconsinreaders.org. This is intentional that it's just a uh, a clear, a clear URL and nobody's going to get lost on, on the DPI website trying to find this resource. Um, the website has also been designed as mobile friendly so it will respond to whatever kind of device um, it's being viewed on, whether that is um, a desktop screen, a tablet, or a phone. Um, the information on the website is very, very similar to what's in the brochure and it's, it's designed that way so that um, what you see is, is what you get. Nobody's getting lost with all these extra features. It's pretty much the same stuff but with an, a bit of an additional um, content in some areas. So I'll show you what that looks like. So at a glance, this is what will come up on your screen, whether it's a little screen or a big screen. And some of the things you'll see um, right across the top are the different languages and how you can access the website. Also, you'll just see um, the logo and, and that, that, um, that main image of the caregiver and young child, again, anchoring you that, yep, I'm in the right place. It's the same stuff. I'm in the, you know, this is, this, is, this is very recognizable. That orange arrow is pointing to the main menu. These are the, the pretty much the same categories you see on the brochure with, of course, the addition of the home page and the about page and the other page that I've uh, already talked about today, the resources for librarians page. So that's right there. And I hope you'll go visit uh, the librarians page um, after this webinar so you can check out many of the resources that are on there. So that's, uh, that's what the website looks like. Um, and a couple more things I want to point out. So if we've clicked on the tab for preschool age, again, we can see the same image in color um, in relationship to the brochure. Um, but we'll see a bit more information here. Obviously, um, we've got a little bit more real estate for, for text, not limited by the confines of the paper margin. So there's a bit more information on here than that's in the brochure. So that's something different. And this is what that same page looks like in Spanish and in Hmong, just so you have an idea. And then if we were to scroll down this preschool page just a little bit lower, we would see authors to enjoy. Now, there are quite a few more authors here to enjoy than that are listed on the brochure. Again, that um, space constraint. Well, on the website we have many more on here, and you'll see that they are all hyperlinks directing users to WorldCat and, of course, using uh, technology such as 
IP addresses and all that, that fancy uh, geography stuff, it will tell you, um, based on where you're viewing it, what the local holdings are for any of these authors um, so that they are really being encouraged to go to their local public library to find find these authors and to get, get books to read with their little ones. Below Authors to Enjoy, we see an image of the lovely Lois Ehlert. And she is a Wisconsin author and illustrator. And due to teaching books, we have access to um, her reading um, in Spanish and English from one of her books. And so if you click on that, you'll get this resource um, that perhaps as a parent or caregiver, you might get an additional insight on on, on the lives of your um, the, 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 the book creators of all these books you're reading. It might be something that um, you might share with a little one, depending on their screen time um, needs. Um, but again, this is just another aspect of something we could include with uh, the multimedia options online. So that's, uh, those are a few of the features of the website. Um, I would just want to draw a little bit more attention to the resources for librarians page. Again, that green arrow at the top is pointing out to the librarians tab so you can readily find this online. And then because there's a lot of information here, you'll see the bracket outlining the many different um, anchor links to help you scroll down since um, this is a, can, can look like one big long list, but it helps break it out into, for example, where you might just go to to view or print more brochures, or how might you get some of the tools for promoting growing Wisconsin readers. Do you just want to identify the um, thousand books before kindergarten and early literacy activity areas that yellow arrow is pointing to, because those relate to the mini grants I mentioned. So um, this is a map that you can find under early literacy activity areas or spaces in Wisconsin Public Library. And Heidi Peeler at the Shorewood Public Library is actively adding to this map. So as more communities in Wisconsin have interactive um, opportunities for caregivers, and, and what I mean by that is it's uh, having um, magnetic letters for, uh, for caregivers and young children to practice um, practice their alphabet, you know, a definite language skill. If that's something that's set up with some signage in your library encouraging families, here's what you can do and here's why this is really important, well then you've got yourself an early literacy activity area. If you've got a puppet theater or perhaps a, a laundry basket with some, some costumes for dressing up like a firefighter or um, a postal uh, carrier, that's, uh, that's encouraging imaginative play, and we know that's really a fundamental early literacy skill. And so again, some of these things that um, the mini grants help support, but many libraries have had them anyway, this map helps identify um, places in Wisconsin where you might find those. So that's one thing to check out. And also, the 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten is something that um, really got a start in Indiana, but is quite, um, quite popular here in Wisconsin. Basically, a passive reading program that encourages um, families with young children to try to read a lot of books before kindergarten. And why, while 1,000 books might sound like a lot, any of these libraries can certainly tell you that when you do the math and break it down, it's really not that many over the course of um, days or weeks or months or years in the lives of little ones. So these are some of the libraries who have one of these programs. So um, you should check it out if you want to get ideas on, on how to do it or different ways to do a program like this. Um, in terms of promoting Growing Wisconsin Readers, there are several things out there. Um, on the right here, you'll see a couple of logos. The one um, with and without the, the, the URL on it, so depending whether um, this is something you're using in print or online, you might want to use the, the correct uh, logo. Also the QR code, if you wanted to pass this out, let's say at the end of a story time with some resources, just including that QR code that's on there. All of these uh, these, these uh, visual resources are available along with the terms of use on the Growing Wisconsin Readers website under library resources for librarians, including um, our new kind of infographic that you could use either to print as a display or perhaps share, such as like on a Facebook page, of uh, just a, a quick uh, visual display of how to read. And um, believe it or not, learning to read begins at birth. And here are a lot of images and quick tips on how to do that. 
So um, I do see the message coming up on the chat of how to be added to those maps. Well, certainly just click on one of those maps. Again, the links are on the League librarians in those categories. And you will see the email address for either Kathy Bloomer or Kathy Larson at the Bloomer Public Library for the 1,000 books, or Heidi for the Early Literacy Activity Areas at the Shorewood Library, and they will add you to those maps. So thanks for your uh, interest in that. Moving on here to some, again, of the other features of Growing Wisconsin Readers. And I'm just going to walk through these briefly. Um, the workshops have already been held, wrapped up just about a week ago with the last one. And this, again, was the official rollout, seven different um, workshops to do the same presentation, a little bit longer version of what I'm offering right now, as well as getting these initial materials in the hands of the librarians as the home base. So they, all the materials will be distributed to the public libraries via public library systems. And the libraries are the main place to get these materials. It's quite intentional that they're not available through DPI. Um, because, for example, if your local Head Start contacts me for brochures or posters and doesn't contact you, then you have no idea that they, they want to be a partner, that they are uh, an advocate for early literacy and they, they want these materials in, their, in uh, their, their facility. So the idea is that they come to you um, and you can get as many materials as you need. Um, and so that's part of what these workshops were about, uh, the distribution and the, the information about, um, about the, whole, the whole initiative. I do urge people to march their calendars, or mark their calendars for March 21st, 2014, which is the statewide early literacy symposium for year two of Growing Wisconsin Readers. Um, we're going to have several different uh, state and nationally recognized uh, presenters at this uh, workshop, and we're going to be really digging deeper into early literacy issues, really focusing on engagement and that importance of having a reading relationship for um, between a caregiver and a young child, and also different kinds of engagement, whether it's a book in hand or a screen. And so we will be talking a lot more about that in March. So mark your calendars now for this free symposium. Uh, talking just briefly about these mini grants, they, they wrapped up and this was a one-time offer to help jumpstart the Growing Wisconsin Readers Initiative. And these were shelf-ready projects that were given to 40 libraries around the state in the amount of $250 to either um, initiate uh, or either um, establish or enhance a thousand books before kindergarten program or early literacy activity area. And in addition, uh, we also had available um, as a grant um, for the application this summer for the grants that will be offered for the 2014 year, um, competitive grants in the category of early literacy projects for either public libraries or public library systems. Now, the 2014 grant window has closed, and there were several libraries and systems that received grants in the early literacy category. But do know that this will be offered again for the 2015 um, grant year. So that uh, application window will open next summer. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind. It's going to be here before you know it. And, and you can certainly get a lot of ideas or see past grants if you want to know how to, how to go about doing that. But just again, reinforcing this idea of that we are providing a lot of materials and resources, but we are wanting to make this open and flexible for you to make this what you need it to be for your community, your library, your system. So again, all of these things, all about the development, were um, designed with a lot of intention to be focused on early literacy, um, but to connect with these different audience and users of, of, uh, of the initiative. So thank you for listening as I went through all of the kind of details of why we made this choice or why it's like this and not like that. Um, that that's where, those are some of the main ideas. So I'm going to pause here because I think we have a couple of questions that came up on the chat, and this would be a good time to, to answer those. So. Um, so I see one question about what was the resource for grant ideas. And if you look on the Growing Wisconsin Readers website, you will see under, um, under those two categories for those kind of shelf-ready project ideas, you'll see um, a lot of the, the information that was offered to mini-grant recipients on, 
on why and how uh, to do those kinds of things. Um, in terms of future grants for the larger competitive category of just early literacy, um, you can look online right now on the LSTA page on, on the BPI website for the kind of guidelines for what's required. Um, it's called the Information and Guidelines, and that's where you can um, see, see what's asked for and kind of the whole process for that. But that will be refreshed next year. Um, to that will be refreshed next year with um, the, for the obviously the 2015 uh, application process. So uh, I think I think we're all set in terms of the questions about grants and how to get added to the map. Mm -hmm. um, and then thank you, Keith, for for sharing uh, sharing the email on how to how to get added. So um, with that, I'm just going to move along. This next this next bit is um, kind of fast and furious because. Uh, well, it just is. So stick with me as we really look at how is this all being implemented and how is it sustainable. And after I go through this, then we'll open it up for any other questions that you might have. So given the background on what Growing Wisconsin Readers is, I talked about why it was developed the way it was, and now um, as of, you know, just, uh, just this past month, everybody in Wisconsin has received these materials and is in the process of launching Growing Wisconsin Readers in their library and in their community. So there are a lot of questions to um, kind of go through as you're thinking about how, how to implement this or what are, what are the different uh, levels of opportunity here. So again, just bringing it back to the big picture, Growing Wisconsin Readers, the primary goal is to support caregivers. So in thinking about how to do that, well, you're probably already doing that really well. So what are other ways that this just might um, be incorporated and complement the great work that Wisconsin Public Libraries are already doing for children and families with young children? Um, the secondary goal is just, again, that recognition to help acknowledge that we've been doing this for a really long time. And um, you know, it's, it's great that on a state and national level that the early childhood experience is getting more and more attention as a crucial window. And how can we help promote the work that we do in that respect? So just keeping that in mind in terms of how you focus your implementation efforts. Again, this, this, this initiative is intended to be very flexible, whether you are a total novice and you're just trying to jump start something your library really hasn't had in place, or perhaps if you're uh, more of a more experienced, you're a veteran, and this is something that you just are going to integrate with things that you already have going on. Across the board, however you slice it, the main idea is that you develop ownership and you figure out how to make it work for you. I certainly am not sending anything your way that says this is the one prescriptive way to do it. The idea is to, to make it work for you. Um, as I've already indicated, the materials have been sent out to each system, and each library received a certain amount of materials depending on the population. So it was an intricate Excel uh, spreadsheet that did the math, but in general, um, libraries received a mixture of materials. Now, right now, um, your youth services liaison for your system is collecting or has just collected information on how many Spanish and Hmong materials are needed. We sent out everything in English, um, but we're taking a request for getting the specific Spanish and Hmong materials, which are viewable online, but the printed posters and brochures will be sent out in uh, early 2014. Again, libraries can share or produce all of the files independently in all of the languages. But again, these materials are available through public libraries. So if you use all the stuff we send to you, um, we can't guarantee we will be printing more. Um, it's not, uh, it's not, in, uh, it's not uh, indefinite. I mean, there, there, will be a, there will be an end to it. So that's why we're really encouraging libraries to figure out how to make it work for you. And maybe, um, maybe it's a matter of, your friends group or the Lions Club um, to get funding to possibly print more if that's really a need in your community. Um, again, the materials at a minimum every library, and we have some really small libraries in Wisconsin and some really huge libraries, but at a minimum every library got two posters. Some uh, bigger communities received some cardboard um, brochure displays. And at a minimum, every library received 100 brochures just to get started. 
Um, once libraries have their materials, the whole idea of is, well, now what? Now you have all these things, how do you actually implement it? And the basis of this, I think I've probably um, touched on throughout the whole presentation so far, but it's, it's using the existing connections you have, families who are in story time, um, perhaps the connection you have when you're doing outreach at Head Start, you fill in the blank from your community. You know who you're serving. But this is also a collaborative opportunity, this initiative, and so it's a time to make new connections. And all you're really asking people to do, it's not, um, you know, invest and buy a truckload of early literacy cookies. It's nothing like that. It's um, just basically asking people to have awareness that you are a home base for early literacy and asking them to display materials, um, whether it's just a couple brochures or hanging up a poster. That's, that's the, the basic thing here. And we're really looking at any locale that's visited by caregivers of children young children. And I see a note here in the chat that in the baby delivering waiting area, that is a great place right from the start, right when they're born. Let's get the message out there. Um, and we are asking libraries and communities to be doing this right now. Um, the materials are out there and we need to get this message out. So I'm looking for a lot of activity happening this fall and this winter. And in terms of how to do this, well, there are a lot of resources to help you. You might be a library that has a lot of um, lot of communication channels in place and relationships in your community, and you just are going to, you know, send it on down the line. But for other folks, you might need a, a letter of support. We have a letter of support from Assistant State Superintendent Kurt Kiefer, who is um, in charge of libraries and technologies, and he's written a letter to library boards and library directors encouraging them to support their youth services librarians and getting out of the building and making contacts at local daycares, at family daycares and child care centers and Head Starts and health care clinics and um, baby waiting rooms, all these different places, getting out of the building to do that. Um, I uh, have got put the word out for um, input on what do you say when you're going to, to do these kinds of talks and, and meet with people. And public librarians uh, sent in um, different scripts for uh, how to have this conversation, whether it's on the phone or via email or in person. So look again on the website if you want some ideas of how do you, how do you broach this or what do you include in your pitch. There are scripts there for that. And certainly, um, different um, different libraries and systems are are handling this in their own way. Whether it's incorporating it into a system wide thousand books before kindergarten program, or just having um, kind of a listserv conversation, um, talk to people and try to figure out um, different ways, uh, different ideas that are out there. I've got lots of ideas coming up on the chat already, which is wonderful. So I'm hoping people who are either online now or viewing this later are taking notes. Um, we've already talked about some of these, these possible areas, but it's basically any place that has a high frequency use or visitation by uh, families with young children. And again, you're just asking for a poster to be put up, and you don't have to give them, you know, your whole hundred pack of brochures. It could just be a couple, and they all have your, your library contact information on the back, and you just say, let me know when you need a refill, and thank you for reading this and, and sharing this message. And again, customizing in all these different ways. I know that um, librarians are creative uh, and innovative folks, especially uh, children's librarians. So I'm imagining to see some really cool um, customized messages on these materials. And again, there are other ways to share this as well, perhaps using uh, making a button on your library website using the, the um, the uh, logo or making just different kinds of displays in your library or, you know, many of the, the, the channels and communication things that we use already, just adding this to the mix. And again, the whole idea is make this your own. Um, you know your community way better than I do, so figure out uh, your, your ideas to make this work in your community. Okay. Um, I, I'm seeing Sue has a question about the infographic. You will find that on the Growing Wisconsin Readers website under Resources for Librarians. And I believe it's under Promoting Growing Wisconsin Readers. You will see um, the web version and uh, the high quality print version. So um, thanks for asking. That's a brand new feature that uh, just came out about a week ago. 
So just, just to wrap up here, how is Growing Wisconsin Readers going to continue? Well, um, I just want to acknowledge right now, you know, what Growing Wisconsin Readers is and what it isn't. Um, Growing Wisconsin Readers as a statewide effort is not for all ages. We are really focusing on children, young children, birth through age six. And we know that um, for those of you who are children or children's and teen librarians that this is only part of your age bracket. Um, but we also know that this is a really critical time period, so that's why our attention is in that area. And for some folks, they probably wanted something that was a little bit more packaged and ready to go, like a training material like every child ready to read. Or the other thing that people always want that we can't um, use LSTA money for is more time staff or money. So I just want to say that I acknowledge some of these things that Growing Wisconsin Readers isn't. But at the same time, I want to acknowledge what it is. Um, we have an identifiable target audience in our state. We have a great home base of Wisconsin Public Libraries in every corner of the state. And we're offering something that is very flexible, customizable, and certainly uh, offers lots of opportunities for collaboration within a community. I am absolutely open for input and would love to see lots of ideas, whether it's a customized poster or ideas for where you are having luck getting these materials out please send them my way because we are going to be trying to share these on a more regular basis with the Wisconsin Public Library community. And lastly, um, after sitting through this abbreviated webinar today, I um, hope that when you leave today's session that you, um, at a minimum, have an appreciation for what this is all about and what went into, what went into it. And that depending on what materials you have on hand that you've received as part of this initiative, that you really have a commitment to use them, that they don't gather dust in your community because you just weren't sure how to get them out there, so that you find some ways to, to share this message. And that, um, that, that this, this initiative, Growing Wisconsin Readers, really is a springboard for your community, your library, your library system, to, to do your own things with, with early literacy in that realm. What, what's a better fit for what you have going on so that it's not always and fully uh, coming just from the state, but it's really grounded in um, our own communities throughout Wisconsin. So in a nutshell, that's, that's my hope and expectations for what this is all about. And with that, I do want to thank you for your time and for um, soaking up all of this information, and certainly there's a lot more online, and certainly pick up the phone or send me an email if you have more questions on that. And we are going to open this up for more things in the chat, because I realize we have a few more minutes um, to, to answer those thoughts. Um, but I also do just want to remind you that this webinar today is the first in a series. We are offering two other webinars in the next two months um, related to youth services and how they really affect um, the, the, um, really affects uh, our community. So um, just uh, take note of these other two coming up. And with that, I'm just going to look over at Terry and see what uh, we might want to do in terms of chat and what questions have come up. And if there's something that's been on your mind or you want me to rephrase or redirect, um, put that in the chat now because uh, we've got a couple more minutes here. Um, and I want to make sure that you you got what you came for. So what else do folks want to know about Growing Wisconsin Readers? Um, I'm seeing a lot of ideas for different ways to implement um, in terms of including applications in the, for library cards, um, including um, including this uh, this resource and just many of the, 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 the outreach efforts that are already in place for connecting um, with young families. I'm seeing here that there are some folks who are writing in on the chat, so we'll just um, have a moment of um, uh, quiet as, as those come in. Gina, thanks for, uh, thanks for that response. I'm glad that it was a helpful overview for you. a few more chats come up, so we'll, uh, we'll just wait as those thoughts come in. Well, thank you. Thank you, Keith, for the shout out. Um, we, uh, we try to serve you, and 
here on the public library development team. And if you have input, just let us know because that's that's uh, how we can best serve you is when we know what you need. So thank you. Well, with that in mind, um, knowing that it's uh, the lunch hour and we are closing up on our time period today, thank you so much for joining. And I'm glad that folks uh, learned a lot and got some questions answered. Please be in touch with other questions that you might have as things go along. And certainly check out growingwisconsinreaders.org and especially look at the resources for librarians tab. And this webinar will be archived as a recording and posted on our website um, in the coming days. So if you want to share this, this opportunity with somebody else who wasn't able to join today, know that it will be there soon. So thanks so much.